We don't really know yet. I mean, obviously we know it's a, a fracture of the cartilage of his rib, um, which is not ideal by any stretch. But as far as severity, it's an unusual injury for a pitcher. And so we're going to kind of wait and see. Obviously, it's going to be a real rest time, um, but unclear about what that means at that point. So we'll see. We heard about it yesterday. When did, when did you guys find out about it? I mean, we assumed on Sunday through his bullpen Sunday went well. We assumed he was going to make the start today. That was the plan. All the bullpens had been going well. Um, he was on schedule for that. And then, um, you know, we found out on Sunday um, that he was having some issues. We didn't know if it was muscular. We didn't know if it was skeletal. We didn't know if it was, you know, you know, indigestion. We didn't know what it was. We had no idea at that point. And so um, he got back from Toronto and um, went to the doctor on Monday and, you know, had the MRI, and that's what we found out. But it was really one where we had no idea what it was. It wasn't a, it's not your usual pitching injury. It's not an arm, it's not a shoulder, it's not an elbow. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, after the bullpen on Sunday, we assumed he was going to make the start today. So, yeah, we were surprised. In your front office career, have you ever had a pitcher? Do you assume it happened from pitching, from the bullpen? We don't, we don't really know. No idea, yeah. And what's the reaction when you, you know how good he was early in the year. You yeah. pictured this stretch run. Yeah, certainly you're hope, more hopeful to get him back tonight and, and start pitching the way he was in April and May. And obviously it didn't happen, but we've been playing great baseball uh, for quite a while. And I think this time of year, you just sort of kind of roll with things like that and move forward. And we have depth. We've always been using that depth for a while and, um, and performing. So we have to keep doing that. But um, I don't know. I think this time of year, you don't stop and wallow too much. You say, it's, it's too bad. We'd love to have him pitching for us, but he's not, and we'll we'll keep playing well. You mentioned, the, you mentioned the depth. Just what can you say about what Javi's done in multiple roles? What, yeah. What role Tyone has gotten down? I mean, Javi, yeah. Asad's been fantastic for us in, in all these different roles, and I think other guys are going to step up in different ways. You know, I think the way this year has gone, as we've talked about, there's been times that Stroman was terrific and times he struggled. There's been times that Drew was terrific and times he struggled. Jamison, you know, same thing, and so you know, really, Steele's been the one guy that's been really, you know, consistent for us throughout. And so um, we've been able to manage during those times. And um, hopefully someone else will step up, um, you know, during this period. And um, that's been happening so far. Jed, are, you, Jed, are you considering him being out the rest of the year as a possibility? I mean, I have no idea. That's an honest truth. We don't really know at this point. Um, yeah, I think we'll obviously get a real rest period and, and see how he feels. But, I mean, again, it's not a real... It's not a real common pitching injury. I've never seen that before. So for me to speculate uh, would be just false at this point. We'll just rest, and hopefully he feels better, and hopefully he comes back and pitches really well. The way that uh, minor league pitchers are handled, Jed, these days, this time of year they're, they're kind of running out of innings sometimes in their development. Will that, uh, go in, will that be a factor as to who we might feel comfortable bringing up here if uh, Rossi needs more people for his staff? I mean, I guess, but right now I feel pretty comfortable in house with with where we are. I mean, he hasn't been pitching for us, so I mean, I think that this isn't. A, we didn't lose a pitcher that was active. We lost a guy that was we thought was pitching today that was on the IL. So we'll move forward with the guys we have right now. Um, obviously, you know, when you're in a pennant race, you sort you you uh, kind of act differently than you would if you're not. So if if that comes to it, we'll we'll make those decisions. But right now, we don't have to make those decisions. How creative or aggressive are you willing to be with those types of decisions if they do come up? Like, are you willing to, like, people that aren't on the 40 man that, you know... Are we talking pitching, hitting? Are you... All together, PCA, yeah. Jordan Wicks, any of those guys. Yeah, I mean, I think we've shown, I mean, look at 2019, you know, we brought Nico off his couch to, <laughs> to play shortstop. So, I mean, I think we've been creative when we feel like it's the, the right thing to do for the organization, but... You know, we're not in that position right now. But certainly when you are when you have a chance to go to the playoffs and you have a chance to win, you, you, you're a lot more aggressive with, with those kind of decisions. And, you know, when you're, when you're not in the race or when you're, or when you're, um, you're building, I feel like those are, it's a lot easier to be clinical in those kind of decisions than you would um, if you're in the race. With the PCA, I mean, is it a Nico 2019 type situation or do you see his skill set as something that you know, could be beneficial here later in the year? Yeah, we'll see. He's been playing great. I mean, I think it's way too early to to talk about that. He hasn't been in AAA too long, but he's playing great and it's been fun to watch. And obviously, his uh, you know he has a skill set certainly that can uh, that can benefit us in a lot of ways. But right now, we're just focused on his development, and it's it's been fun to watch. At this time of year, when you have an injury like this, is there any feeling like okay, just a couple more weeks, get us to September first, and we'll have some bodies? At least? 
Not as much as we used to, though. That's the challenge. It used to be, <clears throat> yes. Like I felt like before, you'd be grabbing as many guys as you could, and you'd have a ton of guys up here, and you felt like um, whatever fatigue you had in late August was going to go away once you could do that. But not really anymore. It's kind of one pitcher and one and one hitter. So yeah, times have changed that way. It makes, sort of makes you play basically straight up the rest of the way. What's the uh, how's Ben Brown doing? Hope so. He's he's feeling good. He's in Arizona, so he's hopefully going to start you know moving towards uh, pitching, and he's a guy that could certainly help us if he's, help us if he's if he's healthy. I'm encouraging us to say Suzuki's kind of recent handful of games been a small sample size. But yeah, it seems like that reset kind of maybe mentally did him did him well. Yeah, it's only a handful of games, but um, I think that our depth offensively allowed us to to do that. I'm not sure we would have felt as comfortable kind of giving him that reset earlier, but we had the the depth and. He's looked great. I thought it was that bat yesterday that to make it 3 3, that was one of the better at bats he's had as a Cub. And uh, hopefully he'll continue that. And, you know, kind of along the theme that, you know, with the pitchers is that, you know, different guys are going to have to carry us at different times. You know, I don't, I don't think we're, we can count on Cody hitting 400 every month the rest of the way. You know, I think we, you know, we're going to need other guys to step up and have a hot 10 days or two weeks. And it'd be great if he was, if he was one of them. As you've watched Adbert's development through this organization, just, what has stood out to you about the way he's taken control of the closer role and, and, and what he's done in, the, in that position for you guys this year? Well, I think one of the things we always really liked about him was his makeup. You know, he's um, really smart, you know, really a, a student of the game, takes care of himself. And um, you know, it's been fun to see with that kind of makeup how he's really, you know, gravitated, gravitated towards that role with just, you know, pure emotion. Uh, it's fun watching him celebrate after a, a save. And um, I love the fact that he's kind of grabbed it and made that his. And, um, you know, I think it says a lot about his character. Who's your favorite uh, closer celebration growing up? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's a great closer celebration. Or like, you know, no. um, I always thought the most intimidating one was Chapman. Just the, the stare down was always, was always solid. Um, and I was, I mean, the one I remember the most in my head is the Brian, Brian Wilson, you know. But um, I'm more of a closer entry song. Person. What was your favorite? Um, oh, is that scary? Do you have like bad memories? That's bad memories. <laughs> um, Hell's Bells? No, no. My favorite one, uh, Papillon shipping, uh, dropping at Murphy's was amazing. Shipping up to Boston. Yeah. The whole crowd stomping their feet. And, like, it was, the game was over. That was that was awesome. Um, 04, uh, Keith Folk came out to Mother by Danzig. That was legit. That was really good. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think of some other good ones. Those are those are the two that that really stick out. What did you come out to? You know, What's that? Close, the little little uh, uh, audio out of the dorm. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you, the players can't really do this, and Ross focuses on the day-to-day. -day, but when you look at this stretch of games before the Brewers series, uh, you kind of look at it as an opportunity to gain ground uh, on first place and uh, leading up to yeah. that matchup. So my super boring answer is like, yeah, like I think when you look at it. It feels that way, but I also think we've been really, really good winning series against good teams. Like I think we've got a lot of really good wins on our resume, and then we've had some some series that got away from us. You know, I think obviously like the Washington series in early May is one that really stick, sticks out. You know, losing three one-run games to the Marlins, you know, sticks out. So you, you kind of can't overlook any. You know, you can't can't overlook it. You know, um, but yes, I think in theory um, we've been running through a pretty tough stretch for a while and playing really, really well. And you, you hope that you, you can continue that against these teams that, you know, it's about four straight teams that aren't going to the playoffs. So, um, but I just think you, in my experience, if you're playing well, you, you can beat anybody. And if you're playing poorly, you can lose to anyone. And we just got to keep playing well. Was this stretch part of the calculus at all? The trade deadline, knowing what you had coming up in mid-August? Well, certainly we knew that our, our schedule wasn't as hard as some teams' schedules. I think that's accurate. You know, we played a lot of tough, you know, tough parts of our schedule in the first half of the year. So I think, you know, just based on the math, you know, the winning percentage of the teams we were playing was lower than the other contenders. Uh, you still have to win the games. You have to play the games. But, yeah, I think that was certainly um, – it was nice to know that the hardest part of our schedule was past us in, early in the year. You, you might on. be the executive of the year just for the Bellinger signing alone, okay? Uh, with that said, Does your, who, who's voting on this? The smoke, is, yeah. the smoke is moving up. Yeah. But um, the reality is it's, it's, it's been a great signing. It's been great for him. 
Uh, is there been any progress in looking toward the future with him? And what, That's an amazing way to ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, whatever his agent's name is, I forget yeah. um, I, As I said, I mean, he's been as as good as it's been for him. It's been better for us. I mean, he's been he's been amazing, and certainly, um, this is he's sort of been like the the centerpiece of this kind of this run we've had for the last six to eight weeks. And he's been amazing. Um, you know, as I've said, uh, we, you know, he knows how we feel about him. We'd love to keep him here. Um, you know, he's been a great fit for us, and he's a great fit in the clubhouse for us, and uh, we'll see. It's Ross easy said he's only going to be sorry. good in the Ross said he's only going to be good in the Cubs jersey. Is that what he said? <laughs> yeah, he can say that. <laughs> Did yeah. you think of it as a, as a big risk at the time that you were going to just keep him and not put him up for a trade market? Because uh, he could have got you quite a few players at that point. Yeah, I mean, winning's better than not winning, you know, and I, I feel like that's, that's the goal. Um, you know, if you said at the beginning of the year, that uh, he was going to play great, and, and probably if you take away the fact that he missed a month, he's in, you know he's in the MVP race and somewhere in the, that top four or five guys. If you said that that we'd be winning and he would do that, I'd sign up for that all day. So yeah, certainly there's a cost associated with you know um, you know not you know sort of not being able to to trade him or whatever. But like the reason we do this is to win. The reason you sign him is to to come in and, and play like this. So. I think when you look at it that way, it's pretty easy, and it was, it was a pretty simple decision, and I'm, I'm glad he's still here. Is it naive to think that uh, this environment, your environment for him, might really be a benefit if indeed you guys want to sit down and do yeah. something long-term out? I, mean, I, think our, I think our environment, to me, it is a benefit for everybody. I mean, um, I think the last like, month or so, the, the way the crowds have been, it's, it's amazing. I think that when, as a player, you come out here on a you know Tuesday Wednesday night the place is packed and um, there's great energy it's a great place to live it's a great ballpark I mean I, I don't know I don't know what who wouldn't want to play here and I think that's been you know pretty consistent for the last, for a while now and so um, I think it's a great environment for Cody I think it's a great env- environment for a lot of guys you know, had three guys that didn't uh, want to play here you traded <laughs> <laughs> The guys that are here are very happy. <laughs> <laughs> you touched on Assad earlier, but um, last year when he was called up, he wasn't really like a, a guy that was on everyone's radar. Yeah. What's kind of surprised you about what he's done, and, and or what stood out about what he's done in, in his time up here? Um, well, I think he can really pitch. I mean, I think he shows that you know his mix is is real. He's got a lot of ways to get you out. Um, I, mean, I thought to for me, I, I thought the way he pitched in the WBC was incredible, and. Um, I think he sort of struggled to recreate that for a little bit this year, and I think we've started to see that that coming back. But to me, the biggest thing is his pitchability. This feels like this, he's he's a guy you could face three or four times, and he could get you out a different way every single time. And I think that's he's crafty in that regard, but it's crafty with with real stuff. There's a lot of good a lot of good stories in the farm, but what Owen Casey's doing? What have you thought of kind of the path his season has gone at Double A in the last two? Months? Yeah, he's had a great season. I think you look at what he's done since the ball's changed. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, obviously, strikeout rate was a little bit high early in the season, but, I mean, he's got to be in the top two or three guys in all of organized baseball and, and exit ve- velocity. He's got, what, like close to a 950, and he just turned 21. So he's having a heck of a year. And, you know, we have a lot of a lot of good stories right now. The the, the guy, the coaches and the you know, the guys in PD are, are doing a great job, and he's you know just one of a, a bunch of good stories. With your bullpen, who are having career years and, and a lot of guys who are also approaching a career high in innings pitch. How do you evaluate that and the need to rest or not rest? I don't know. Yeah. That, that's a calculating yeah. into the bigger picture yeah. as this season goes. It's a hard time to rest them, you know. So um, the biggest thing is the training staff does a great job and the pitching guys do a great job of trying to monitor that day to day. And, you know, there's been a number of times when we felt like a guy needed a day off and you guys may or may not find out about it depending on the game situation but a lot of times just a day of rest for a guy where he feels like he's tired and uh, you try to get ahead of that stuff but you know, that is the that's the challenge of of you know playing deep in the season is that you know you look at a lot of teams that are in contention you're going to have a lot of guys that are they are you know, pushing you know that with what we what the expectations were as far as uh, of appearances i think our guys have done a really good job you know our guys don't show up among the top you know 10 or 15 in the in the league in, the league in appearances we've been fairly good that way and hopefully we can benefit that towards the end of the year when you uh sign smiley this time around 
uh, you and Carter and other people sit around in the office and go, you know, this is the perfect picture for us because whether he's good, bad, or in between, he's not going to be afraid to go out there and pick big games for us if we need it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I thought he was excellent last year at the end of the season. Uh, really, really pitched well for us. Um, maybe started a little bit before the Field of Dreams game, but he, he got on a real roll and then pitched great at the beginning of this year. And then, you know, the hope is that obviously he's had a downturn and he would change his role a little bit, but we're going to need him to make a lot of, a lot of big appearances, a lot of big starts. And the hope is that um, maybe a little bit of rest and, you know, just kind of, you know, working on getting things right that he can turn it right back around because, I mean, again, like last year, the, the starting right around this time of year, he really took off, and hopefully he can do that again. For Morrell, I know early on, DH, the mental side, yeah. it was a struggle. What's the impact of him figuring that out and finding success? In That's hard for any player to figure out. I think everyone wants to be in the flow of the game. But, I mean, with the way our team is set up right now, it's going to be important for him to do that, and hopefully he just keeps on adjusting and finding the routine for it. And... Um, you know, kind of going back to what you guys asked us to say, you know, the hope is that he finds another hot streak here, and um, we know he can carry us when he when he finds one. So hopefully, he's got another one left in the next six weeks.